everyone, if you've seen my previous video on how to upgrade pancake mix, videos up there, you would know that I learned a lot of tips and tricks from Chef Neil Kleinberg from Clinton Street Baking Company. Don't make them too big because then they're going to run into each other. So the first time I had the famous pancakes at Clinton Street was back in February and they were phenomenal. Wow. This restaurant in New York City is famous for its pancakes. People normally wait hours just to get a taste. So I thought it'd be a great idea for you pancake fans out there to make another video, including all those extra bonus tidbits. Hi. Y'all are upstate now? Yeah, you're in Cape Cod? Yes, it's so I much the, here. I see the ocean in the background. That um, is the marsh, and um, then no. <laughs> up front is the, mar uh, the beach. Ready to talk pancakes? Sure. The first method that I tried was just adding ginger ale instead of water. Have you ever done that or have you ever heard of that kind of <laughs> tactic? Is this a, a spoof or put on or what? The next thing I did was make a pancake breakfast casserole. So I basically used the pancake mix as like the binding factor for a casserole that had bacon and cheddar cheese and eggs in it. <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare. I would keep those items separate. I would make the pancakes and then not do a casserole, but do a side of scrambled eggs with cheddar in it and a side of bacon and then call it a day. Honestly tasted kind of like a McGriddle, if you can believe yeah. it. Yeah. I don't even know what a McGriddle is. What do you recommend I make with the pancake mix? I think we should make the Clinton Street famous blueberry pancakes at home um, using a box mix. And this is the way I would do it. If you're going to get a mix, get something that has the basic dry ingredients in a regular pancake mix that you're making from scratch. Flour, sugar, salt, baking powder, baking soda. The only pancake mix that I was able to find, which was difficult in and of itself, was this one? Have you ever seen it? Oh, Crustiez. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> We're looking at things like thiamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, soybean oil, egg whites, and buttermilk. Okay, well, that's not bad. Those things are dried. So they took those items and they kind of dried them. So you have everything in a mix. And we're going to, with a mix, embellish and make them really, really as good tasting and as good looking as we possibly can. Now the key in making something delicious from a box of something is to add things to it to enhance the flavor, the texture, and the way they come out. What kind of ingredients would you recommend me adding to this to shush it up? Sour cream, maybe. Maybe some regular buttermilk, maybe enhance it because it has dried buttermilk in it. Something fatty that's going to give it a luxurious flavor. So whatever the instructions are on the mix, you're going to follow them. But you're also going to add, what does it say on that box? It's just mm -hmm. adding in cold water? No, you should add the cold water and then you should add some buttermilk, if you can find it. Take um, a third of a cup of water out and add a, and in, in place of it, add a third cup of buttermilk. If gotcha. you can't find buttermilk, then take a third cup of a spoon of sour cream with a little regular milk mixed in. You should wind up with two thirds cup of liquid. You can add an extra egg, it will make it much richer. Would it be too much if I added some vanilla extract in there or like some cinnamon? Um, vanilla extract would be fine. Cinnamon, eh. Then you're going to turn the pancakes a color by adding cinnamon. If you want to do anything at the end, you know, if you're making sliced bananas in the pancakes and you want to sprinkle some cinnamon sugar over the top at the end, that's perfectly fine. But if you add any spices that are dark to the batter, you're going to have a dark batter and then they're not going to look that great. And if I were to put in vanilla extract, just a little, like cap, yeah, cap, it, that goes a long way and it won't color the batter. So let batter stand for two minutes. Okay, perfect. There should still be lumps in the batter. And then you let it rest. Um, What's well, the purpose of letting it rest? 
Well, you're letting it rest so you can pull the flavors together and you can actually form a batter. And if you go too quick in the pan, then the molecules of the liquid and the dry won't have a chance to meld. Well, the best way to cook the pancakes is to have a flat surface, preferably a grill or a large cast iron pan or a large flat pan that doesn't have sloped sides. I'm trying to think in like what I have in my arsenal right now. I do not have right. a skillet. I do not have a griddle. I have like a large saucepan. Okay. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> so get the large saucepan hot by turning on the flame and then lowering the flame so it's hot to the touch, like a bead of water would bubble up on it. I think it's definitely hot enough. Then at that point, add a generous amount of butter, uh, like a pat of butter, maybe a half a tablespoon or something like that, and swirl it around the pan until it starts to get foamy, but not brown. That's the point at which you're gonna put a spoon or a ladle full of pancake mix in the pan. A key characteristic of a great pancake is to have that golden ring around it when you first flip it. And in order to get that, you have to put enough fat on the pan. If you have a large pan like you're describing at home, kind of use that large pan as a clock. Start the first pancake at 12 o'clock, then the next one at three o'clock, then the next one at six o'clock, and then the next one at nine o'clock. Don't make them too big because then they're gonna run into each other. Then let it cook, medium heat. How many times should I flip the pancakes? Never flip them more than once. Why is that? Uh, they're gonna become tough. They're gonna get burnt. They're not gonna cook properly. Let the pancake cook. You'll start to see the bubbles come up. That's the point when you add your filling. Remember when we did them together at the restaurant, we put a good amount of butter on them, clarified butter and some whole butter, so that the pancake would get a nice golden ring around it. When the cake is kind of halfway cooked, when you could actually flip, peek under it with a spatula and see that is a golden brown edge and the bubbles start to form on the top, that's when you add blueberries. Or we use wild main blueberries that have a very short season, but we get them frozen and they're wonderful frozen because it's, they're tiny and they pack full of flavor. You should get them and then sprinkle them into the pancake while they're on the griddle. If you can't find those, then cultivated regular frozen blueberries are really good. Actually, frozen fruit is really good in a pancake because they don't overcook and they cook into the batter and they hold their shape really well. And if you can't find that, then fresh blueberries are always around. Definitely sweeter than your regular blueberries. Is there like a rule of like what's too much? Yeah, it's too yeah, it's too much if they're not uh, you know spaced out correctly, and then the pancake itself is not going to cook properly. And then with a spatula, just flip each one, and then don't push it down. And then in about a minute or two, they should be cooked on the bottom. Like now, I just got to flip it. Moment of truth. Ah uh, no. I can see why he didn't want a pan with sloped sides. I got, I got four golden rings. After I'm done with the pancakes, is there any other way that I can make this pancake meal even more delicious? Yeah, we're going to make maple butter. That's our trademark um, syrup. And there's a very easy, great technique of how to make it. I've never made an emulsification before. You can't go wrong. Even if the pancakes suck, th this maple butter will make them delicious. Okay. Hopefully I don't. It sounds very easy. And I hope that I don't mess it up. Um, you won't mess it up. Take a small saucepan. Take a half a cup of really good maple syrup and then have a little whisk and take a quarter, a stick of butter or a half a stick of butter sliced in some pats 
And then as the maple syrup is getting warm, one pat at a time, whisk the butter into the maple syrup until it melts. I am alarmed at the amount of butter that is in this. And the sauce should be caramel-like in color. It can be light or darker caramel, depending on the maple syrup. So at Clinton Street, the maple butter is like still very liquidy. It's not like a whipped maple butter. And it has a very like pale, light yellow, light brown color. And I think it's almost getting there. You can get a grade B, which is a dark amber. You can get a grade A, which is a little lighter. And when the butter and the maple syrup combine to make the sauce, you eliminate kneading butter on a pancake or maple syrup. You have them both. And you can pour them right on. You can dip each bite of pancake into it. I'm going to give it a taste. Ooh, that is good. After I'm done with it, I'll probably give you a little photo of it and you can kind of like grade me, <laughs> but please say yes. <laughs> Post a picture and I won't, I won't be mean on the grading. All right, take care. Send me a photo. I will. I, okay. <laughs> I will. Thank okay, you. Bye. Talk to you soon. Do you think if I did everything according to your directions and succeed at that, it'll taste drastically different from the pancakes at Clinton Street? Yes. <laughs> it's very hard to make uh, the pancakes taste as good at home as we do at the restaurant. It's the kind of griddles, it's the ingredients, it's the stuff by scratch, but you're, you're still going to have a great product if you do the maple butter and you use really good blueberries and you embellish that dry mix. They're obviously not as pretty as the pancakes at the restaurant, but this is the next best thing, and they smell incredible. The texture of the pancakes is a lot fluffier and softer than the other two methods and pancakes you would just get from the box. The main blueberries add just like such a nice freshness and vibrance to the pancakes, and they really are so different from the normal blueberries. They just pack more of a punch. The buttermilk, egg, vanilla all make the pancakes so much fluffier and like have more flavor to them. It's such a drastic difference. And this maple butter, I could literally put it on everything, but I'm not going to because I know just how much butter goes into this. I got four golden rings.